on the the brake system uh what do you feel on maintenance what's what's the best weekly maintenance i know most of us are lacking on changing our brake fluid like we should especially early in the year when it's cool the the brake fluid is drawing moisture really bad because of temperature changing what's your setup on that ben so on brake fluid um the thing we have to realize is pretty well everybody races on a wet boiling point brake fluid because the brake fluid draws so much moisture into it as soon as you open the bottle and it doesn't take very much moisture to get the brakes where they're or the brake fluid when it's at a wet boiling point so the things you can do to help maintain that system one is you want to use a good brake fluid you want to use uh, like our HTX style brake fluid or like a 600 plus style brake fluid uh, not your I don't recommend using your cheaper style brake fluids because the wet boiling point of that is so low compared to the better brake fluids. So first start with that. The, um, as far as the weekly maintenance goes, you know, you should run a couple of, a couple of pumps through every caliper every week. Uh, that gets the dirty uh, burnt fluid out of the caliper itself and gets a fresh fluid supplied to the caliper because that system doesn't circulate fluid. Uh, you know, it's going to, whatever's in the caliper is going to stay in the caliper. It's not going to cycle back to the master cylinder itself. So getting that fluid out of the caliper is very important, especially in cases where, you know, today we see more and more people dragging the brakes and glowing rotors and things like that. So you definitely want to get that fluid out as best you can. But then as far as uh, uh, changing the fluid throughout the year, um, I like to look in the master cylinder and just simply look at it and see, you know, is, is the fluid clear? Can I see the bottom of the master cylinder? Is there a lot of dirt in the bottom of the master cylinder? Um, a lot of things like that you can look at and see how that fluid is deteriorating over time. Once that fluid gets to where it's not clear to where you can see the bottom of the master cylinder, or if you see like a little lining of dirt or, or black film in the bottom of the master cylinder, I like to simply just, uh, you know, you can either suck the fluid out of the master cylinder, you can sop it out with rags, anything just to clean the master cylinder out itself, put new fluid in it, flush it through the lines, you know, four or five squirts per, per caliper, and then go again. Uh, if you do that, you'll, you'll find yourself in, especially longer races, you know, you'll find it where you don't have to pump the pedal or have any kind of brake fade issue. The other thing maintenance wise is we touched on the bias adjuster. Um, count your turns every week. If you have 22 turns this week, you should have 22 turns next week, next month, next year. If you find that, you know, middle of the season after I got in a wreck, I've only got 16 rounds, there's a problem there somewhere. You've got something bent, broke, or bound up. You know, if you found every week, hey, I've got one less turn, I got one less turn, I got one less turn. That's just robbing you as, uh, as a driver to be able to adjust the car while you're racing. You know, the the brakes is the only thing the driver has as a, you know, a cockpit tunable device in the race car. So keeping that thing maintained where you can use it, you know, anytime during the race, uh, it's a, it's a huge advantage, you know, so count your turns every week, use some type of penetrating lube on it or a silicone based lube on it. Make sure you clean it up out of the floor. If you get some in the floor, so your driver's feet aren't sliding around everywhere. Uh, but definitely, you know, keeping track of that and, and keeping everything good and free there is good. Brake pads, I'd say, I'd say every four nights at least, I probably would take them out, rough them up on concrete, get the glaze off of them, try to get them squared up as best you can. You know, a lot of our brake systems, especially in the, like a stock GM style brake system, that pad is very long and it has a lot of taper issues to it. Uh, just because of the design of the, the whole mounting system and everything. So you want to take those things, buff them up on concrete, and try to get the pads, try to keep them as square as you can. So anytime you've got a pad that's, I'm going to hold my hands up here, but sometimes you have a pad that's wore at an angle like this, you have to push the pedal, it has to square up to the rotor, and then it can clamp. That whole time, you're just wasting time to, to uh, get your, your brakes to apply. So keeping that whole system square is very good. Last is, you know, inspecting your rotors. Make sure they're not getting too thin. Make sure they're not getting grooved up. Uh, check for cracks uh, in the rotor itself, on the ears of the rotor, anything like that, just to make sure you don't have any kind of issues happen.
it's a pretty common problem too with the the rear rotors uh cracking where the the allen bolts or or the small bolts bolt them on uh, a lot of times i think uh from what i've seen people over tighten those yeah and the bolt takes a different heat set than the rotor does so in the cooling process it'll crack the rotor is that not correct yeah so on the rear rotors especially on a modified you know we're we're bolting those things to a solid steel hat in a lot of cases. And a lot of people, for whatever reason, they want to use the biggest impact they have to tighten those bolts down. Um, so you, you can strain the inner ring of the rotor itself. And when the outer part of the rotor heats up, it tries to expand and it can't because the inner part's restrained and it breaks the ears off. So one of the things you can do if you have that problem, um, especially guys who glow rotors, this is a, a thing that you can do to help help call you know solve some issues is simply drill the threads out of the hat that you're boating that rotor to and then run a longer boat with a crush lock style nut and just just you know snug the bolt up you don't have to tighten it up but just get it where the nut and the boat uh, you know the nut and the bow head touches and you know you can still spin the boat but you can't have any slop in it and that'll get it where that rotor can expand and contract just a little bit. That's all it needs is just a little to keep from cracking those ears. Okay. Another problem I've seen as well is uh, obviously dirt racing is still a bit of a contact sport. Uh, when you're bleeding and brakes on that, always uh, while well, you've got the pressure off the, the caliper, slide the caliper back and forth because it doesn't take much of a hit in a wheel. The wheel deflect just enough to hit the caliper. And those bolts uh, tend to bend, and you can have a bent caliper bolt, and have caliper drag will keep a brake drag in a car and cause all sorts of uh, right. issues. So I always check the the caliper bolts as well when I have them part on maintenance. For more information on this or any other Afco products, check us out at afcoracing.com.